Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, hot tick buns, childbirth devices and driving through floods. Now Lippy. Hello. We are in Lippy Towers. We are in the same room. In the same room. I don't think we've done a full episode in the same room together ever before. No, I don't know if we have actually. No. No. So, wife of Grumpy, who we now need to refer to as Lady Captain. Oh, yes, Lady Captain. (laughs) Has gone on her Joint Captain's Charity Day. Yes. Today, um, in aid of the Prostate Project in Guildford. So uh, obviously a charity that I fully endorse. And um, I've come over to dump a washing machine. (laughs) And fit a fridge. Uh, Oh, and fit a fridge. Yes. Don't don't forget the fridge. Definitely not forgetting the fridge. So for this episode and the next one, because we record two together, we're uh, together. In Lippy Towers. I like Lippy Towers. I like Lippy Towers. And we're also using equipment we've never used before. So if it sounds awful... Don't blame us. Yeah, talking of which, I can only apologise for the aircraft noise. Oh, in, and the washing machines on. That's no, awful. aircraft in the last uh, episode, um, you live quite close to Farnborough Airfield. So very. you get intermittent ones. Mm. And Grumpy Towers is close to the Gatwick. path for Gatwick. And depending on which way the wind's blowing, you can get quite a lot of aircraft. So I have the posh, fancy planes and you have the big, dirty ones. We have the big, dirty, smelly, noisy ones. <laughs> yes, yeah, spot on. Yes. Uh, before we start with our usual nonsense, I'd just like to uh, pay tribute to our friend and neighbour, Al, who very sadly mm. passed away yeah. uh, this week. He, he suffered a few demons, and unfortunately drink was one of them, and uh, it got him in the end. He was a lovely chap. Um, mm. He very fondly remembers you and the Horse Whisperer yes. on scooters. Uh, yeah. He's always referred to you as the Scooter Girls, even 20 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, and he had an insatiable love of music. We'd sit for hours talking about music. Um, so very, very sad, but um, you're not suffering anymore, Al. So no. I did In a better place. Indeed, he is. Anyway, I had a message from the Screaming Tomato. Oh, yes. Down under, yes, uh, yes. Sent me the uh, poster for ELO's tour. Who? Who? <laughs> the Electric Light Orchestra, who were 1970s and 80s, massive group. I mean, just gigantic. And Ooh, um, They look very spacey. It was very spacey. And I've still got uh, Out of the Blue, which was their big album in, uh, on vinyl. Uh, Question. Go on. I, from looking at the poster, they look similar to Ross's music on the keyboard from Friends. Um, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, scene. Vaguely, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the music I'm picturing whilst mm, looking at this picture. No. The the point <laughs> is the point is it's called the Over and Out Tour. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. Yeah, this is not good. Uh, Mr. Jeff Lynn, please. No. Le- learn your sayings. And we were talking last episode or the episode before about concert tickets and the price. Mm, yes. Is it Taylor Swift? Yeah, Taylor Swift. So Stevie Nicks, who was founder member of Fleetwood Mac, for those yes. too young to uh, remember that. So she's touring in the UK. Um, one of the um, venues is the O2. Oh, I've done London. it again. What have you done? I always mix up Stevie Nicks and Stevie Wonders, and I can never remember which one's which. And that time I was like, oh, yeah, Stevie Nicks is the man. No, Stevie, no, Stevie Nicks, Nicks is the woman. Is the lady. The, the witchy lady. Yes, yes. That's, that's a very, very good way to describe it. Not that she is a witch. But she dresses. She's very, very magical. Pretty, very magical. Anyway, her tickets are two hundred and ten pounds and ninety five pence each, Ooh. plus two pound fifty handling fee. How can you charge two hundred and ten quid for a ticket and then a handling fee? That's outrageous. That's madness. Absolutely outrageous. How long's the concert for? I don't know, and it would be very good. I mean, she is a superb artist, mm. um, but I don't think I'd pay that much. No, I wouldn't. No. Unless maybe it's like a cult thing and she's doing some magic, then I would. No, there'll be no magic because that doesn't exist. <laughs> now, this episode is going out on Good Friday, hopefully. And we'll be in a field in Cranley helping oh, yeah. some youngsters locate uh, chocolate eggs. Well, and we have got so many eggs this year. Have you? Oh, good. So many. Um, well, my favourite part is that I get a bucket full of eggs. <laughs> and this year, because I'm pregnant. Yeah, you that, that, I need snack. I need to be constantly snacking. Yeah, that chocolate in those little eggs is an acquired taste. It's like Christmas coin chocolate. 
Yeah, it's got something in it that's yeah, I don't think very good for you. I'm sure the baby will like it. Doesn't, uh, the, the baby doesn't like anything that's good for it. It doesn't like broccoli, but it does like a Diet Coke out of pizza. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine with the chocolate eggs. Yeah, I think it probably will be. Uh, one of our Lions members went to Sainsbury's yesterday and came away with 120 eggs. Oh, wow. So we have got so many eggs. The donated eggs. Donated eggs. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. That is good. Yeah, there was a bit of confusion and they said, oh, you'll need to go and get a trolley. And he went outside and he looked at the two trolleys and went, do I go in with a smaller (laughs) one or do I look a bit cocky and go in with a big one? So he went in with a big one. Yeah. And they filled it. They filled it. Nice. Fantastic. So That is great. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and it's before 10.30 and you're in the Cranley area. Chances are high. Chances are (laughs) high. I think all the people that listen to this will be there anyways. Yes, most likely, yeah. actually, because I know a few of my friends are coming. Excellent. The more, the merrier. Mm. The only thing I would say, apparently it's quite soggy in the car parking area. So. Oh, bring your four by fours. Four by fours. And or walk down. Uh, that would be better. possibility. That is definitely the best thing, but it's probably too late for that. Uh, anyway, uh, the point I was getting to is that Iceland have yeah. released hot tick buns. So instead of a cross on it, there's a tick. Uh, oh, Which I think is quite a clever mm. marketing. But according to GB News, and this is not a news station that I would generally pay no. any attention to whatsoever, <laughs> um, they've got an article on there saying apparently people are in uproar over it. And it, uh, it says a Christian group, it doesn't name them, uh, basically think it's, it's the end of the world. But Blasphemy. Well, is that the word? Blasphemy. Uh, that's, that's quite good. But quite how you go from a Christian religion to hot cross buns mm. and chocolate eggs, I don't know. And also, like, realistically, I think it's more offensive some of these ridiculous flavours that Marks and Spencers have come out with. <laughs> well, yes, it's name and shame. I mean, there's all sorts, aren't there? There's cheese ones. Yeah, there's, no. Like, all sorts. That's of more stuff. offensive than a tick. Yeah, I, well, I think so. But I'm pleased to say that our mark here, which comes on a Thursday, the mm. uh, bakery there, have got a very nice looking hot cross bun. So Ooh. I shall be topping up on Thursday. Yes, I think the baby would like that. I think the baby would like that. So, uh, wife of Gr- oh, sorry, Lady Captain. Lady Captain tends to eat hot cross buns all year round, which I think is more blasphemous than blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that's a word. No, that and the cream eggs. Yes. She would eat cream eggs all year round if that was a possibility. Uh, absolutely. She keeps appearing at home for one. Does she? Well, apparently I got a box sent to work. Someone messaged me. I wasn't in the office. So there's a whole box of cream eggs here with your name on them. I was like, I have no idea what they are. What, cream eggs? Yeah. You don't know what a cream egg is? Well, no, I know. No, I don't know why I've got a whole oh, box of them. That's a slightly different question. Yeah. Now, I found an interesting little camera, digital camera. Uh, a while back and it's mm. if you remember if you remember this far back but you used to have what they call disposable cameras i'm not that young <laughs> well like, i can't remember when they were we had disposable, had disposable cameras, cameras. <laughs> okay so there was a film camera <laughs> yeah and it was a sort of one usage which mm. is you know when you look at the environment it's probably not brilliant but no. um that you know that was the 90s so yes yes anyway so they somebody called camper snap has produced a digital version i've seen this yeah so it's uh there's a viewfinder there's mm. no screen on the back mm. uh there's a um, sd card in there that's held in with a screw so it's not going to pop out too easily um it'll take thousands of photos and presumably yeah. the battery will last you know for a very long time it's a chargeable one uh, which i thought was a really good idea yeah. so i bought one did you? I have bought mm. one and I'm going to use it to take photos of Baby Bambino. Yeah, oh cute. And then when it's full or when Baby Bambino reaches a suitable age, I will give oh, him or her the camera that. and there'll just be a whole load, you know, from the reveal party all the yeah. way through. So oh, I love that. I th- yeah. So if, if there's any more cute. Baby Bambinos, I'm going to have to buy another one and leave One for each, yeah. <laughs> and there'll be crossover, of course. Well, there'll be photos with, if there's more than one. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. yes. I was like, sorry, who else is pregnant? <laughs> well, nobody I know. But well, yeah. So talking of baby Bambino, mm. how is it going? I'm, everyone keeps telling me and I keep seeing lots of, well, I'm, I keep I keep saying reading. I'm not reading. I'm watching TikToks. I keep watching lots of TikToks where people are like, for those mums in their first trimester, you'll be, you've only got a few weeks left. When you hit 12 weeks, you'll feel great. I feel awful still. <laughs> oh dear. I have good days and bad days. I have more good days and bad days, but I still um struggling with the nausea 
and the tiredness. And someone kept saying to me, oh, you'll just have this energy. You'll just start wanting to do things again. I didn't shower for like five days because I didn't want to, because so much effort to shower. I do the same. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's not a baby thing. (laughs) I'm I'm getting there. I've I've just realised there's quite a bit of popping going on. And there's no pop filter in the box. So um, I'll have to try and work some magic with, <laughs> with the editing. <laughs> Don't hold out much hope. Hey, you'll be pleased to know I found a patent for quite an innovative piece of childbirth apparatus. Oh, a patent? Isn't it a patent? Patent, patent. patent. I, I don't know which way, but <laughs> it's one of those. And it's apparatus for the facilitating of the birth of a child by centrifugal force. Sorry, to help me birth the child. Yes. So when a woman is ready to deliver her child, she lies on her back on a circular table. Yeah. She's strapped down. Oh, God. Okay. The table is then rotated at high speed. The baby comes flying out <laughs> and apparently ends up in a net. So this was granted in 1965, so not that long ago. Oh, God. Really? No. I think they'd know better. And um, although meticulously and lovingly engineered with safety features to protect both mother and child, strangely, the device never made it into general use. Yes, I think I prefer the idea of a pool birth. Would the pool be spinning? No. Hmm. But I could spin in the pool. You know, like you do when you're a kid and you run in circles and you make yeah, it into a little I, whirlpool. I'm not sure you're going to be wanting to do that. <laughs> I then went on to a bit of a patent. Um, patent. Weird patents. Weird patents. So this one is called Hoot Hamster. And it's a series of tubes that you wear on yourself a little bit like a life jacket. Okay. So it's, um, transparent tubes and the hamster goes in the tube and then will run around the tubes while you go walking about so you can take your hamster for a walk you can take your hamster for a walk uh he can see the surround- I quite like that um it seems rather odd um and i can't see any vents for air which sounds like it um might not be a very good idea isn't there i can see the little dotties there are lots of little dotties i think the dotties are center lines oh I mean, there must be air coming in there. It wouldn't be a sealed unit. I do quite like that idea, to be honest. Yeah, it looks like it's got a food store. Yeah. And uh, so it runs around a waistband and then can go up over the shoulders. Yeah, that's quite quite a clever idea. I mean, you'd get some odd looks. No. But then people walk cats, don't they? So. Uh, Very rarely. (laughs) Very rarely. (laughs) Now, I've got another obsession. Oh, yeah. People breaking down in Fords. As in river fords, not oh. Ford motor cars. <laughs> trying to go through the big floods. Trying to go oh, through various fords. And um, there's one in uh, up in Nottingham mm. that has attracted so many spectators. And in the summer, it is literally a trickle across the, the road. Yeah. There's, there's nothing really to be seen. But in the winter, we've been having quite a lot of rain. The things are torrent. Ooh. And uh, quite, a gr- cr- quite a crowd gather. Yeah. To watch people oh, yeah. being stupid. I would 100% go and watch that. The number of cars that go like through watching there. the races. It is a bit like yeah. that. But they go through there at such speed. Oh, because they think the quicker they go, the quicker they'll get through. And then the water gets sucked into the engine and mm-hmm. it destroys itself. So it's not very smart, to be honest. And some of the But people, it's great entertainment. It's astonishing entertainment. And, it, and it's, it's very good toilet viewing, if you know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> Yes. So there's one uh, chap called Ben who puts uh, a whole load of them up on up on YouTube. Mm. This one particular Ford has um, has actually been closed by the council because it's been attracting too much attention. I, I bet you get people see those videos and they go, I reckon I can do that and actually go just to see if they can drive through the Ford. Yeah, very few can. There are a few people mm. that are absolute stars and know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, but there are also some cars that aren't designed. I reckon I could do it. But not in my Aldi. It's too low to the ground, I feel Well, like. this is the problem. And I go back to 1987 and the RAC rally. And Derek Bell, who's one of my heroes, was driving a Vox Lastra. Yes, and I know what that is. the air intake was right at the bottom of the radiator. Oh. So on the first day, drove through a Ford at one of the stately homes. Got water all in it. Water in it. And Done. Died. All of the Astras went out on the first day for that reason. That's so annoying. It is annoying. Um, so... I think 
manufacturers generally put them higher up. But these people are going through this Ford so quickly that the water is just flying over, over the, the top of the so car. Some of them doesn't go, matter where it is, then no. you're getting. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> the water's getting there. Doesn't matter. And some people drive in and then end up veering off and going down the river. So instead of carrying on on the road, they're off down mm. down the river. And when we get floods, the police say, "Don't go in water." There's, you know, it's not yeah. very many inches deep. And these people are going through two foot. Very silly. silly. Very silly. So silly. my advice would be: sit on the toilet and watch people doing it. Don't, Don't do, do it yourself. <laughs> Now, talking of cars, you had a bit of a beef about your insurance company. Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Because you can... My insurance is due on the 8th of April, which I would like to announce, actually, to everyone, that I have sorted and paid and reset up, and I've still got, like, two weeks left. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I think I deserve a thank you. Very good. Very, very good yeah. indeed. I also did my MOT with a week's notice as well this year, so I'm very on top of it. Anyway, I so I went on, because you can look 30 days before to see how much your insurance is going to be. So I did that and compare the market like I always do. Then I went to my current account, which is Admiral, I think. I always forget who I'm with. Anyway, so I went on to that to have a look to see if my renewal comes through and it hadn't. So I messaged them saying any chance I can get my renewal because I'm looking at prices now and I like there was quite a good low one and I just want to compare and then decide what I'm going to do. He came back with no. Well, not just no, obviously, but the, I can't because it's computer done based that he can't get me my my insurance renewal quote any sooner so i replied saying oh fine i'll just go with this other company then thinking that might like spur them on to be like oh we'll see what we can do nope he just came back saying oh we really hope we can get it out to you before you decide to leave us i was like oh okay yeah that if it was admiral we've had experience with admiral um personally i wouldn't touch with a barge pole anymore oh, I've, I've and, with them. <laughs> and they're and they're very happy to cut off their nose despite their face well, they gave me quite a good discount when my renewal did come through. So who have you gone with? Admiral. Yeah. I've been with them for the last three years. Why? I didn't realise they were bad. Oh, uh, we there was an incident. Oh. Um, oh, home insurance is with them as well. Oh. I'll move that then. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was an incident where uh, Lady Captain um, was driving along Bookham High Street and was hit by another car. She was mm. stationary. And wife of Grumpy was stationary. If they were both stationary, how did they hit? No, no, no. The other car was moving. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, so she tried to put a claim in. And, oh, this woman said, no, no, we'll, we'll pay for it. That's all That's all right. And then they went, no, we're not paying for that. So it went to the insurance company and it went nowhere and they just shut the claim. So we ended up having to pay to have it done. So as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't count as a claim. No. But Amor had picked up that this had happened and they went, oh, uh, your wife is insured on the Corsa which you girls had, um, we need to put the policy up. Well, why? Well, because she had this accident. Well, yeah, but, No, you didn't, well, you didn't pay us out for it. And yeah. it was a non form one. Oh, no, you've still got to put it up. And I'd just taken out insurance for the Mini with them and mm. was going to swap all of the cars over a multi-group policy. And I said, oh, so, no, I do remember this now. Yeah, and I said, right, well, if, you, if you're going to charge that, that's fine, but I'm going to cancel the Mini and cancel all the others. And they went, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So they charged, I think it was another 80 quid or something, and then lost all the Hundreds, yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy. That is crazy. And I had a problem with them before when I came off a motorbike, and they decided to put my car insurance up, and I said, but it's not related. Um, yeah, a, a mo driving a motorbike is very different to driving a car. Well, I think this was just on the cusp of um, if you've had any accident whatsoever, uh, then we're going to put your um, policy up. So this was the start of it. Mm. Uh, eventually they did back down but um, no, I wouldn't touch them oh well I mean I don't tend to crash so well, I don't need to claim <laughs> also I drive two days a week these days yeah that's true I don't drive enough I put my miles right down to like 6,000 because I yeah, just I don't know. go anywhere it's, it's astonishing isn't it and Duck Boy is getting a lovely new car oh yes a nice big one yeah so my car will be pretty redundant once that one comes along yes yeah, so that's very true about. and how do you pronounce the name of it Tucson? No, the manufacturer. Hyundai. Because haven't they changed the way? No, I think that was just a marketing ploy to get people to remember Hyundai. They're saying it's Hyundai. It's Hyundai, yeah. But it's not, it's Hyundai. Hyundai, yeah. Well, no, Hyundai. There'll be a course. When you pick it up, there'll be a course. I'm going to ask. Mm. I bet the salesperson has absolutely no idea <laughs> which one's right. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Almost certainly not. So I think, going back to the insurance, isn't 26 days the... 20. Uh, 
20 days is 20 days is the prime time oh no 20 days is when Admore released their renewal no but 26 days according to martin lewis money saving expert Ooh, is the, prime. yeah it's when it's it's lowest well i got it i got it down from 130 to 194 that seems that's a lie up. i got that's it down up. from i got it down from 330 to 294 okay Wow, my numbers really didn't come out properly there. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, you've got baby maths. I have a baby brain and I'm not, I haven't got a baby yet. According to one of our clients who's also pregnant, that happens before. Well, Lady Captain keeps telling me, no, you can't have pregnancy brain. It's only baby brain. Mm, but I definitely yeah. have pregnancy brain. I'm forgetting everything. Yeah. It's the hormones. Blame the hormones. Mm. Well, that's a good thing to blame. <laughs> I was somewhat shocked to see HMRC was going to shut down their self-assessment hotline for six months after April, which um, I've only had a couple of dealings with. What do they do? Inland Revenue. Oh, Inland Revenue. The and, tax man. And it's been shockingly bad, I have to say. Um, I don't think I've ever spoken to the tax man. They sent me letters. Yeah, and I had, I had a letter from them. Well, I have four letters on the same day saying that I owed them £20,000 of tax. Oh! Which I'd paid. What? Yeah, I'd paid it. Um, but, but you already paid it? I had already paid oh, it. Oh, you yeah, had it already all, paid it. Paid. You didn't owe the... Okay, no, sorry. No, so I didn't owe it, but they were missing a piece of paper from the accounts. And um, instead of asking for that piece of paper, they just sent lots of letters. So I phoned up and said, well, what's going on here? And, then, and the woman said, oh, I can see what's happened. She said, I just need this. Um, we can solve that. And I said, oh, well, why didn't you put that in the letter? She said, I honestly don't know. No. She said, I stopped a letter going out last week that said an ex gratia payment instead of ex gratia payment. Oh, God. <laughs> so, and this is, oh, gosh, 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. Wow. And, and they're I, probably more automated now. Well, it's not so much automated. They just don't have the, the skills. Yeah. The, the people don't, have, don't know what they're doing. No. And it's fairly typical of having people in a fairly low salaries mm. and then they've got a choice about where they work yeah they've just got people in to be shouted at basically well probably or um just just to get on and do things and according to private eye now is the best time to do any tax fiddling that you may or may not want to do oh because it's just after the tax no because there's they just don't oh i see because they don't investigate mm, i see my favorite letter from the tax man was they sent me a letter saying i owed one pound fifty in tax because something had changed in my salary and oh. i said well if you didn't send the letter, you probably would have saved the one pound fifty and paid off my tax. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to pay it up front or split it across the year. <laughs> well, I'd split it personally. I just left it. I didn't reply. <laughs> they they just do stuff, don't they? They just change your tax code and yeah, like absolutely. sort it out themselves if you don't reply. So I just didn't reply. <laughs> it's the best thing to do. Anyway, they've uh, decided to do a reverse ferret and reopen it after. Oh, good. I think, getting a telling off from mm. the Charles Wood Exchequer. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. And I hear, you know, stories of people that are on the phone for hours and hours trying to get stuff mm. resolved. I'm so glad I'm not self-employed. Well, it can be fairly straightforward. I mean, Lady Captain is self-employed and I do her return every year. And it's, it's a doddle because mm. it's some money's come in, there's a bit of expense and the rest of it's um, income. Yeah. But if you've got... You've you got know, a confusing one. Well, for example... Like stock and... Well, stock or be order with subcontractors and all mm. that. It's just monstrously difficult. Nightmare. And, they seem to put all the onus on the individual to do it, not mm. not themselves. But, you know, we we are where we yeah. are. I learned the other day, you don't get a statutory maternity pay if you're self-employed. Oh, no. It's, you get a maternity allowance, yeah, it's which not, is a wonderful £180 a week from the day you give birth. Yeah, being self-employed is not wonderful in terms no. of benefits. Um, I've always done it through a limited company. So, essentially, you're employed, but you have to... Uh, leave the company to get any sort of um, employment benefit. Oh. So if you're between work, then then you don't get anything at all. No. Oh, the dog's woken up. Oh, do you think he needs a wee? That's yeah, he needs a wee. Wow. I think Floyd's a bit confused about the AstroTurf. And, yes, where you know, he's allowed to wee. Talking of dog bodily functions. Um, oh, no, he's got a smell now. So we went for a walk earlier this morning. Mm. We'll tire him out a little bit. And we, we did one of our usual routes and we're walking up the road and there's a massive water leak coming from the middle of the road so i thought oh i really ought to report that because it's about quarter past seven so you know. probably the one of the first people to have seen it possibly and it certainly wasn't there last night because we did the same same trip so um so i had a look at thames water report first and 
of all the things in terms of what to do they do that well unbelievably <laughs> badly they do this really well and up pops a map said where you are press a button report it really easily simple so i'm doing that and i turned around to see floyd had had a massive dump in somebody's driveway <laughs> So I apologise if you've looked on your camera this morning and there's a small brown dog and a massive pile Doing a thing. big brown yeah. Yeah. plop. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly Thames Water get on the case there because there was an awful lot of water coming out of um, middle of the road, pavement and uh, all over the place. So. Oh. But annoyingly, they've only just finished working on that bit. Oh. So who knows? Well, really? they fixed it about a mile down the road. That's the problem. No, they had that bit dug up. It's, that oh. bit's been was open for ooh, a good six weeks, I think, while they were yeah. replacing stuff. So, who knows? Who knows with Thames Water? Who knows? We had a letter from the council to say they were doing something to our pavement. Oh, yeah. Don't know what they're doing to it, but they're doing something to the pavement so we won't be able to leave our driveway between the hours of oh. 8.30 and 5 oh, that's... for a certain amount of weeks. When's that? Mm, starting next week or the week oh, after. Oh, okay. So you wouldn't want that in September? Oh, God, no. I think I would just drive through them, to be perfectly honest. If it was, if I was in labour and they were yeah. blocking my driveway, yeah. I would not. When we were doing NCT classes, there was a discussion about getting to hospital because uh, the Halls Whisperer is due end of January and obviously there's a possibility of snow and all sorts of things. Oh, yes, of yeah. And um, somebody said about driving. I said, if your husband's not around, should you drive to the hospital? Oh, and the lady doing the NCT said, um, oh, no, use an ambulance. And then somebody said, why, are they be easier to drive. <laughs> Can I guess who that was? <laughs> yeah, you know who that was. <laughs> but we've just dispatched Duck Boy with Floyd. Dog. He seems to be slightly confused about your AstroTurf. Yes, doesn't understand that he's allowed to wee on it. <laughs> well, it is a little bit like carpet, and he's very mm. good in the house. Mm. Um, we did have a, a couple of nights of a rather horrible poo explosion. Well, that's probably like illness poo, though. It rather was, than... yeah. Yeah, because he tried to get, he got down to the back door. And, um, oh. yes. And manic. Anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, when I started my software development career in 1981, mm. I worked using a language called COBOL, oh. which oh. you don't hear about at, at all, really, these days. But um, interestingly, there's 240 billion lines of COBOL code still running mm. in the world. And um, 70% of Fortune 500 business systems and 85% of all business transactions uh, go through a mainframe that's running COBOL. Oh, well, Wait. I guess if it was one of the first codes, it's what a lot of people it was a very, on. Well, it was a very early one. And it was, you know, it's a business language mm. uh, rather than a scientific one. Um, but the problem is, is that nobody wants to work on it. So people like myself come into oh. you know, end of... Retirement age. Uh, sort of retirement age. And, um, and nobody really wants to touch it because it's so... So old. old. Yeah, it's so old. And it's not, you know, it's, it's so different to the development languages you use now. Oh, it's a lot easier in some respects, but it's a lot more predicating in others. Mm. So it's a really difficult one. And um, they're saying it's the most valuable asset in the United States after oil is Ooh. the lines of cobalt. So uh, crazy! So yeah, maybe, learning that. Well, maybe there's a couple of years of um, of, of really milking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows? Just doing some self-employed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> My but rate I, is five hundred pounds a day. Oh, a bit more than that. Yeah. A lot more than that. Anyway, so you know, you look at something like a uh, modern language C sharp. The book's about two inches thick. Cobol mm. is about a quarter of an inch thick, and ah. it's got everything you need to know in it. Easy. Very, very easy. I could learn that. Do it you on could, maternity. You could learn that. Mm. Now, I've not watched any of the Formula One this year. Well, you've missed one race. Oh, I thought I missed two. Is yes. One this weekend as well. Yeah, you've missed two and there's one this weekend. I got confused because they were on a Saturday. Yes, just where because of where they are in the world. Okay, that's not what I heard. but Oh, I thought that's what it was. It was to do with Ramadan. But... Oh, that I makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, which is fine, but it was a bit confusing because I then thought, well, maybe they've moved them all to Saturday. No, no. There was a few reminders as well for people to say, it's on Saturday, don't forget. <laughs> a bit. Anyway, with all the goings on with this, that and the other, it does seem to have turned into The Apprentice or The Only Way is Essex, depending on how you look at it. You're going to have to explain that one because I don't. <laughs> well, one name, Christian Horner. Oh, the dra oh with the drama. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yes, I got you there. Okay. 
Lewis going to Ferrari. Yeah. And Very dramatic. This one going there and that one doing there. There seems to be more excitement away from the track yeah. than there is on track. Yeah, on track's a bit dull. I mean, for this weekend's race, Max has qualified first again. Where is, where is it? This? Australia. Oh, Australia. Melbourne. Melbourne race. The only interesting one is Norris is fourth. Oh, very good. And Leclerc is fifth. Excellent. Which is bad because Sainz is the one that's leaving and he was third. Well, he oh, was second. Okay. <laughs> and he's the one leaving Ferrari. Oh, dear. But yes. Yeah. So I I think it's I think it's quite sad when the peripheral stuff is more exciting. More interesting. Than the sport itself. Mm. Although last week not last weekend the last race they had a very they had an 18 year old british driver in the ferrari car i don't know if you saw about this i think i did but i can't remember the name with signs having an appendicitis oh yes so yeah. he was in he did so well he scored points i think he came ninth or eighth or ninth and Gosh, did really well stunning, isn't it? yeah had a really good race so good he's got a good good career ahead of him i think yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? And another British driver, which is good. It was actually Russell, this guy, Oliver something, or Ollie something. Oh, yeah. Ollie, I can't remember his surname. Ollie something, then Norris, then Hamilton. Wow. We had four British drivers in a row. Gosh. Oh, I haven't had that for a very no. long time. Yes, I'm still not going to watch no. it. <laughs> we'll let you know when it starts getting interesting again. <laughs> Excellent. Well, when Max gets a puncture and is out of the race, that's when it will be interesting again. Yeah, or maybe somebody just lock him in a cupboard somewhere so he doesn't. He's not mm. there for race day. I just think someone should take a, take the hit and take him out every week. Well, interesting. I saw a picture of Damon Hill this week standing on the corner in Australia. Mm. Well, I think it was Australia where um, Michael Schumacher took him out. Oh. So. Michael Schumacher had hit the wall and wasn't going to finish. And if he didn't finish, then Damon Hill would win the championship. Oh. So he drove into Damon Hill. Oh, I love that kind of drama. Well, it's very bad sportsmanship. It's very bad sportsmanship. Really bad. Um, although it's good winning ship. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> if I remember right, Michael was stripped of second place and all the points. So yeah, you uh, can't you can't win for something like that. No. That's not good behaviour. Yeah. So I kind of understand why he did it. Mm. But in the heat of the moment, you think, well, if I just just nudge him a bit, yeah. But um, uh, there was a start of in, you know in camera video, and you could see quite clearly he turned into him. But, yeah, you need um you need slightly better tactics like Carlos had last season, where he kept Norris in his DRS so that Norris then wouldn't get overtaken by the Mercedes because if the Mercedes have overtaken Norris, they would have then caught signs. Yeah. So he finished the race with Norris in his DRS, just to keep giving him that little push so that the Mercedes couldn't overtake. Now that's good. That's good teamwork. That's good. Well, they're on different teams. Well, it's good into teamwork. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it helps when you have a common enemy. Yes, exactly. So in the last episode, you did your... Um, how do I describe it? I've forgotten it things, now. <laughs> things you can get away with now that you're pregnant. That's the one. Yeah. So have you got a thing for this week? Do you know what? The problem is, is I can't remember what I said last week and I don't want to say the thing. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. <laughs> I don't think I wrote it down. <laughs> oh, no. I, well, if I, it's the same as last week, just... Well, if it's the same as last week, just, it, just in itself, what? it's a thing you get away with. Repeating yourself. Repeating yourself. My, well, my um, thing I thing you get away with oh no i do remember what i said last week okay i do it is different that's a good start is um you never have to make yourself a drink ever again Ooh. just tell your husband or your partner your baby daddy that the baby's thirsty <laughs> and that you're too exhausted to get up that's outrageous i mean duck boy's only semi-listening i'm sure i'll go go into whisper mode you'll never hear this but yeah that's my my one you never have to make yourself a drink again unless you want to i've got a slightly odd fun fact oh yeah pistol dueling with wax bullets was a popular pastime in the early 20th century and even featured as a sport in the 1908 Summer Olympics. Oh, that would still hurt. It's going to sting. Yeah, that would really hurt. It's going to sting. Yes. Um, they, they see the picture here. They do seem to be quite well protected with a big overcoat. Anyway, we've been distracted by a dog. So, um, well, that's it for this week. Yes. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. 
Goodbye. Bye.